so many TVs, so little time. With that, there are so many mistakes made every year during Black Friday. And I don't want you guys to end up making the same mistakes that people make constantly year after year. So in this video, I'm gonna give you all of the TV models to avoid and which ones to target in place of that. We're gonna go through different sizes and different price ranges. Hopefully you guys will find this video helpful. And if you do find it helpful, I ask you to please consider using my affiliate links in the description below and in the pinned comment. It greatly helps out the channel and I can't thank you guys enough for doing that. Now before we go onto the list, I wanna talk about the number one rule when we're talking about buying on Black Friday, and that's avoid brand loyalty. Brand loyalty will get you nowhere when you're buying a TV. In fact, every TV brand has a bad TV model or an overpriced TV model. And that's just how it is. Because the TV is on this list doesn't mean that it's necessarily a bad TV. It's just kind of overpriced for the price to performance that you get out of the TV. And that's what I'm looking at in this video. I'm looking at deals. This is Black Friday after all, so we gotta make sure we get those deals, right? And if you think I'm wrong about something, just tell me in the comments below. We can have a little bit of a debate. All right, let's go on with the list. Right, so starting off, we have to start in the 55 inch category because this is one of the more important categories of Black Friday this year, mainly because of this 55 inch TCL 5 series QLED TV. Yes, this is a 2021 model, but the price is ridiculous. $200 for this TV kills every deal available in the 55 inch market under $500. This is the one to get. It's 60 hertz, yes, but if you need 120 hertz, you're going to pay more than this anyway. 55 inch TCL 5 series, that's just going to be the one you target. So what that means is all the TVs in the 55 inch range, there are too many to even really list, but just avoid them all avoid them all until you get to the $500 range. Okay, so now that we are at the $500 range, you're looking at the U7H for $500. And while that might be tempting, for $100 more, you could get the U8H, which is going to be a better TV. And for $150 more, you could get the TCL6 series. Looking at some of the other mistakes you could make in this category, the X80K, the X85K, and the X75K from Sony, I think that these do not give you good price to performance value and they're just overpriced. So I would totally avoid this line from Sony. In the same vein, we can talk about the Samsung TVs. The Q60B, the Q70A, and the Q80B are ones that I would avoid as well. Same reason for the Sonys. They just don't give you good price to performance and there's better TVs out there. The QNED 80 series and the LG Nano series are ones that I avoid as well. Just not great for what you're getting out of it for the price. And again, with the U8H and the TCL 6 series, they're just better TVs than these. So yeah, you would not choose this TV in my opinion. The Vizio MQX is also one to avoid as there is some problems with 4K 120Hz. All right, moving on to the next category, which is $1,000 and up in the 48 to 55 inch range. We're going to have to talk about the A90K. Now, the A90K is something I would personally avoid. If you're looking for an OLED TV that's 48 inches, go with the C2. It is $1,049 versus $1,200 for the A90K. So yeah, it's a no brainer to me. And the A90K doesn't perform quite as well as the C2. So that is something that you want to note. Going up from there, I have to mention the QN95B because there's some confusion thinking the QN95B is a huge step up from the QN90B. This is not the case. It's pretty much the same TV performance overall. And really all you're getting is the One Connect box. So unless you need the One Connect box or you are wanting the design decisions, save some money and go with the QN90B instead. Next, we have the QN700B for $2,000. I would definitely avoid this. This is not a good deal at all. Yes, it's an 8K TV, but it's a 55 inch 8K TV. To me, it doesn't make sense, $2,000. Now this might be a controversial thing to say, but the 55 inch A95K for 2,500, to me, just feels overpriced. When you can get the S95B for 1449, you're looking at almost the same type of performance out of the TV for way less. There are going to be some situations where you want this TV because you want the best of the best, you have money to blow, and you just want to have a really nice looking TV, then okay. But if you're looking for Black Friday deals, this really isn't one. 
All right, let's move on to the 65 inch range. We're gonna start off with $1,000 and below for the 65 inch range. I'm looking at a lot of these direct lit TVs here from the 65 inch range and I would just skip all of them and pay a little bit more to get the local dimming in the TCL 5 series, whether that's the 2021 version for $499 or the 2022 version for 549. That is the way I would go with these. Going up from there, we're gonna talk now about the $1,000 to $2,000 range for the 65 inch. All right, so while the A2 is okay in some sizes for the price to performance, I think at the 65 inch range, the LG A2 is one that I would skip because for $100 more, you could get the B2 and that's going to be a 120 Hertz panel. So that's going to be a better TV overall for just $100 more. So I think that to me is a no brainer if you're looking at the differences between those two. At 65 inches, the X90K for $2,000 is one that I could say to skip because it does just feel really overpriced because you could get a TV that performs just as great as this for way less. All right, looking at $2,000 and up, I don't see a lot of great deals here in the 65 inch category. You can make an argument for the G2 if you need a mount and that five year warranty. If we're looking at the A90J, this to me is a mistake at $2,500 for a 65 inch A90J. I just don't think I can recommend that. There is better price to performance out there for TVs. All right, before we move on to the 75 inch category, I just wanna mention that the AK TVs really aren't going to be great deals for most people. And I think unless you specifically need an 8K TV or want an 8K TV, then you should go ahead and go with a 4K TV because it's gonna be better value overall. All right, now looking at the 75 inch range for under $1,500, I wanna talk about a few that kind of stick out to me. There's not that many great deals. I think that when you're looking at some of the better deals out there, or the 75 inch range. On the cheaper side, the Samsung TU690T. It's not terrible for $580 if you just need a cheap 75 inch TV. Going up from there, I would skip some of the other direct lit TVs because the differences between that and the Samsung for the same price aren't very high. When you move on to some of the local dimming TVs, the U6H doesn't seem like a bad deal, but for $100 more, you can get the 5 Series, which I think is going to be a better performer than the U6. Taking a look at the X95K for $3,000, I really don't like this deal at all. It just feels really overpriced when you consider some of the other TVs that you can get in that price range, in that size. Yeah, the X95K, again, is overpriced. All right, moving on to the 85-inch TVs here. We're going to now talk about some of the downsides to the 85 inch category as there's not a lot of options in the cheaper range. So maybe if you just want a cheap 85 inch TV, I can't really say these are bad deals because the price gap between uh, this TV and the next TV up is pretty big. But you have to consider you can get a pretty good 85 inch TV for $1,800 in the TCL 6 series. And you can go $200 up from that and get a Sony 85 inch X90K for $2,000. So that's just the one thing you might wanna consider when you're shopping for the 85 inch deals. All right, so remember what we said about the other sizes when we're talking about the Sony, LG, and Samsung TVs that we should avoid? Well, those same TVs apply to 85 inches as well. Don't get those TVs. Again, they're not going to be great price to performance. And that's what we're trying to avoid on this list. When you get to the $2,000 range, we start to see a couple of competitive deals here. Going up with the 85 inch X95K. Again, I think this is a really good TV, but it's just overpriced. All right, if you like this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing for more TV videos in the future. And if you wanna watch another video, check out this one right here.